Last time I created some basic graphics for the land with a low poly style and basic coloration. You can still be low poly but create other looks even with a fairly good realistic appearance. Utilizing textures either free or purchased helps achieve this. I explored a variety of options online including ambientcg.com, one of my preferred sites. I downloaded a basic grass texture package from here and a more cartoony or stylized style from another site. I wanted to show how these could look with the same basic landmass. The licensing can vary widely, so be sure to read and understand if and how you can use these. For the cartoon or stylized version, I will use the square one, while the realistic comes with a variety of files. Most will be used to help improve the appearance of the final texture. Opening up Blender and using the same basic cube for the landmass, I'm going to add some loop cuts to allow for some variation in the ground height, just like I demonstrated in the previous video. But this time I'm going to use a randomized feature to have Blender make the adjustments or variations for me. Once again I'll open up the shading tab, and for the first one I'll drop in the stylized image. Usually it will show up on the left, but if it doesn't, simply select from the menu. Now again I select the faces on the right, and scale and move on the left to try to get a pleasing look. It is flat in appearance, but at least there appears to be some grass instead of just green color. Nice, but not the look I want. I'm going to remove this texture and add in the other textures. The base color is easy, and the rest mostly just connect up as listed. Add roughness and connect to roughness, etc. Be sure to select the non-color option in the color space section. When I connect displacement and zoom in a bit, you can already see some texture to the ground that makes it look a bit bumpy. Of course, zooming in too far pixelates it, but if your game is set up properly, the player should never be able to do this. Normal map can be connected to normal, but usually it is run through a normal map node first. This helps to clean it up, and the slight adjustments to the strength level allow you to fine-tune the appearance. Once again, this is nice, but not the look I'm going for but it is worth exploring options to ensure your chosen style is something you can live with in your game. While the palette I have is quite small, if I had the larger group of textures applied to, let's say, 10 different objects, then that's potentially 10 times the texture that will have to be loaded and stored in memory for your game. In this game I expect hundreds of objects, perhaps thousands overall, and all using what will probably be the same palette. So if I replace the multiple palettes with a single instance, it should allow for more efficient memory usage. In a prototype like this, it really won't make a large difference, but for a bigger, fully fleshed out game, that can help with performance. It also is a good practice to optimize while you go, instead of saving it for a potentially humongous task later on. To do the optimization, I'm going to start by selecting one of the palette graphics from the import folder and duplicate it. I'll name it just HCG Palette. Now I can go to each scene, select the mesh, and drag my HCG file into the surface material override box in the inspector. Checking the game and everything still looks good. So now I can go through and delete the original files and verify that it still looks fine with all the objects using just one texture file instead of multiple. It does, so I'm good. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.